Okay, welcome to video three. Um, we have a lot to cover today. We're going to talk about the French Republic, we're going to talk about the Reign of Terror, and we're also going to cover the outcomes of the Revolution. So, um, last class, we left off with the National Assembly ending because it was too weak and had no support from the Church. So today we're going to pick up with the French Republic. When the Constitution of 1791 went into effect, it created the Legislative Assembly, which took much of the power away from the King, um, and gave them gave the legislative assembly the power to make laws approve or reject declarations of war as well the power to enforce laws still belonged to the king but he was no longer the one making the rules the french legislature is called the national convention and it has three groups the girondins who supported the king the jacobins who were radicals and included men like jean paul Marat. Um, a newspaper editor who was known for writing fiery editorials in which he often called for the death of those who were loyal to the king, um, Maximilien Robespierre, and George Danton, um, who was a lawyer, and he was dedicated to defending the rights of poor Parisians. And the final group, which really had no particular um, one views one way or the other, they were just kind of neutral. So, um, the National Convention ends up suspending the office of the king and reducing the king's role to basically the same as a common citizen. The National Convention is now led by the Jacobins, which is the radical group, and they put King Louis XVI on trial for plotting against the security of France, and they found the king guilty of treason, and they sentenced him to death. So Louis XVI was publicly executed by guillotine on January 21st, 1793. While Louis XVI had been on the throne, France had been at war with Austria and Prussia. So not only is the National Convention having to deal with a king who has committed treason, um, they also have to stop the foreign invasion, invasion of France by Austria and Prussia. The Committee on Public Safety was set up to protect France from foreign invasion. To do this, there was a conscription or a draft of all unmarried men, 18 to 25 years old. Of course, not everyone was in agreement with the revolution. There were counter-revolutionary activities as well. Now, these counter-revolutionaries were folks who still supported the king. For example, Jean-Paul Marat was the newspaper editor I told you about earlier. Um, he was murdered. He was stabbed to death in his bathtub by Charlotte Corday. Now, eventually, she was um, found guilty and sent to the guillotine as punishment. So, speaking of the guillotine, um, this leads us to the Reign of Terror. It lasted from September 1793 until July of 1794, and the goal was to suppress any and all opposition and revolt to the revolution. This was accomplished through extensive use of the guillotine. Over 40,000 people were executed during the Reign of Terror. Maximilien Robespierre, who I mentioned a minute ago, um, he was running the show at the time, and he once said, quote, It is necessary to annihilate both the internal and external enemies of the Republic or perish with its fall, end quote. So he's basically saying that anyone who is a threat to France, either from within or outside, needs to be eliminated. Now, the folks that Robespierre feared the most were his fellow radicals that challenged and questioned his leadership. Many of these people were sentenced to death, with the reason being that they were less radical than Robespierre. So, remember when I mentioned George Danton a moment ago, the lawyer who defended the poor? Um, even he was put to death, and as he was on the scaffold right before his execution, he said, don't forget to show off my head to the people, it's well worth seeing. So he, I guess he was kind of having a little bit of a sense of humor about that. Um, I don't know that I would have, but that's what he is said to have said. So really, um, no one was safe during this reign of terror. Some of the other victims, um, other than Louis the Sixteenth and George Danton, include Marie Antoinette. So the Queen of France was also um, had death by guillotine. There were many nobles, the bourgeoisie, which remember there were the French middle class, peasants. Um, in fact, one young peasant was executed because he had cut down a tree that had been planted as a symbol of liberty. So even uh, Robespierre was executed by guillotine. In 1794, some of the members of the National Convention were tired of him and his radicalism, and they turned on him. 
They demanded that he be arrested and executed. Now, with Robespierre death brings the end of the reign of terror. Um, but here are some interesting numbers for you. During the reign of terror, at least 300,000 suspects were arrested. Now, remember, this only lasted for um, not even a, well, a little over a year. July, what was it? September 9, 1793 until July of 1794. So not even a full year. Um, so 300,000 suspects were arrested. 17,000 were officially executed and perhaps 10,000 died in prison or without a trial. So where do they go from here? Well, the National Convention underwent some reforms um, or changes. So remember that the Committee of Public Safety they were responsible for the reign of terror, but they also got rid of the Catholic Church and they were looking for quote unquote, virtuous citizens. Some other reforms include a universal elementary school, wage and price controls. Now this was also to stop inflation as well. Slavery in French colonies was abolished. The metric system was adopted as well as a new calendar. Now. This new calendar, it didn't last, but here are some details about that. Um, on this new calendar, there were 10 days in a week. The months were given brand new names, uh, and it started on September 22nd, 1792, which was the date of the Republic's creation. So in 1795, the National Convention created a new plan of government. Now this is the third form of government that France had had since 1789. So in less than, uh, less than 10 years, um, this government has just completely changed. So the government placed the majority of the power firmly in the hands of the upper middle class. It called for a bicameral legislature with an executive body called the Directory. Now the Directory wrote another constitution and there is a two house legislature. The Directory itself consisted of five men who often argued and were not very effective leaders. Eventually, the directory becomes just as unpopular as the old regime, and this is going to pave the way for a military dictatorship to take over France. Okay, so four things you need to be able to identify as the outcome of the French Revolution. First, we see a secular society where the government and the church are separate. Second, we see the end of absolutism and the divine right of kings. Next, we see a massive swell in nationalism, which is pride in one's country. Um, think like, uh, like Napoleon, okay? Uh, he was super proud to be French. And the final outcome is the democratic ideas that are reflected through writings like the Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen. So next class is going to be all about this guy, Napoleon. We're going to talk all about him and find out what happens when he comes in and takes control over France. See you then.